Hi, I'm Lee Sand Miller with W. Cushing and Company, and this is August's third Thursday with Lee Sand. And we're going to give you a little sneak peek at the September October Rug Hooking Magazine pattern insert. The pattern insert is going to be our maple leaf pattern. And you can do a myriad of things with this. These are just two that have been hooked as chair seats. And as you can see, they're quite different. One is a little more primitive in outline. This is a little more defined. So today we're going to look at the pattern, look at things you can do with the free insert pattern, and then some different color plans. So here I have printed on a table runner, and this is one option. So you can take the pattern insert, and if you have a light box, you can take a long piece and you can print it. You can print the leaves in all different ways. If you want it to be on a, ta a long farm table and you need it in one direction, that's fine. Uh, or, and what you can do in between now is go into your yard and take oak leaves and acorns and draw them in or just fill them in with a scrap background. But don't, it doesn't just have to be a square pattern for a tile or a round pattern for a chair seat. Now, you say, well, Lisa and I don't have a light box, so how do we do this? Well, there's a, a lot of different things you can do. You can make your own light box by getting a coffee table. And if you get a coffee table with a glass top and you put a light underneath, there you go you have a light box that you can draw on. You can also tape the pattern to a window and then pin your uh, pattern up. You can use red dot and transfer the pattern. Uh, the red dot that we have now is not as thin as it used to be. It's a lot thicker, but it does make a better pattern that stands up longer. Uh, and you can draw yourself. Uh, they're a lot of fun. There are a lot of things that can be done, and they work really, really well. So, uh, about a year ago, I said how to hook leaves. We'll go over that a little bit more in the presentation. But if you can think about this, you can do a runner. You could do a whole full-size rug. You can do anything you want because you can position this. You can take the pattern that is in Rug Hooking Magazine, enlarge it, make some large, some small on a copier, or scan it into your printer. And then you can scan it in and print it smaller. You could have smaller ones, whatever you would like. But these are just different options to use the free pattern insert. If you don't want to print your own or trace your own, we will always print one for you. So here we have a beautiful, it's very nice, it's, it would be a table runner. I would line it out. I would probably would add other things around. So how do we go about color planning these? I always say start with your veins. Your veins are very important. If you put your veins in first, then it recedes. If you put your veins in last, they pop out. And we don't have to look at, and these were put in last, these were put in first, these were put in last, and you can see that these are much more predominant than this one, not only in color, but just because of the placement of hooking. Uh, that is one of our tools. What we want to recede, we put in first. What we want to pop, we put in last. So if you want your veins to be your predominant and your veins actually set up your leaves on how to hook it quickly, efficiently, then what you would do is you put that in first. This can be a scrap, it can be a spot die, it could be a velvet, it could be a beautiful velvet in there. It's fine just the way it is. A very nice vein is also this right here dissected and cut across, this beautiful uh, harvest plaid. And then this is a very subtle vein. Fruit of the Loom is very subtle, but you could cut it across this way and you could get all these little pops of color. And with this, you don't need a lot of one color. You can go into your stash. Um, and if you're going to do a runner, 
your unifier, like we used in Prudence, your unifier can be your vein color. So once you put your vein color in, that allows you to have your segments. And here is how, when I teach how to hook a leaf, this is what we do. And I come in here and we break it up into segments and into segments. And I'm gonna actually switch to a red marker for this. Okay, and I'm gonna put this in. And my veins would already be hooked. Now, the worst thing that you can do is make your veins bold and solid. Well, bold is okay, but solid. You need this to be some motion, whether it's a texture, a spot dye. The velvet gives it a lot of motion, uh, and there's another way to use the velvet. This is a good way if you wanna test it. So here's my veins, and I've already hooked them in. They get hooked in first, so there you are. There's the veins, they're hooked in. Notice I didn't color this in. This can be any color you want. It can be brown, it can be chartreuse, it can be green, it can be red. It does not have to be the same color as your vein. So, the next thing we do is I'm gonna break this off right into here. And you can actually start, and how I like you, everybody to start, is by tipping in one color. And by just tipping in this one color, and it doesn't have to be all just at the tips, you will see the leaf starts to turn on its own. So by doing it this way, and this is one color, not your main leaf color, and you can always tip the point if you want. So yeah, I did some points, I did some sides, and by moving it around, the leaf is now turned this way from just being a stayed leaf like this. So now it's turned. Well, what can you do your points with? Well, we're gonna say for uh, purposes of this that fruit of the loom is our vein. We're actually going to tip these with the burgundy. And we're just gonna tip each of these with the burgundy velvet. So this is our vein. Here is our burgundy velvet to tip it with. Now, when we go to hook, if you notice, we have one, two, three, four, five, six segments. And by breaking it off into segments, you then hook an echo, this is an echo hook, the shape. You can pick one color, you can pick a spot die, and in this case, I'm gonna pick Monet's Garden. This way I would just hook it. So I would come along in here, and I would hook Monet's Garden all through here. And this would be the leaf. The order of hooking vein, highlight, then put the leaf in. Because this is a spot die that changes, every time I would hook with it, it would look different, it would have a different look, and it would allow you to really have a fall looking leaf. If you didn't want to use a spot die, you're a texture person and you really like your textures, we would go with something like Perfect Plaid. Perfect Plaid has a lot of different elements to it. So when you have something that is predominantly red-orange, we would still keep these colors. We might change the vein if we were using Perfect Plaid to a dark green, like Mysterious Green. Or you could keep this as your, this as your vein khaki velvet and put this as your tip. So if we work with that, we're gonna, we're gonna cut and you're gonna lay it out where this is your teal piece and this is your orange piece. So now we've broken this out into two segments. And by breaking it out into two segments, we're going to hook it in two segments. So when you go to hook it, 
if you want the tip to be darker, which I would, and I'd want this at the end. So my, my vein would go in first, mysterious green, then my khaki velvet would go here. Then the piece that I cut from the perfect plaid, which is right here, that would go in number one. This piece here from the plaid would go in number two. But by doing it that way, they're from the same piece of cloth. You don't have to finger it in. You just hook it like that. When I got to this piece, I don't want it to be a straight line. So I would reduce it a little bit and make this one, this two. Up here, I may want a little more of the green. So this would be one, this would be two. Again in here, this would be one, this would be two. I might just want a little bit over here of two, that would be one. This would be one, that would be two. And then your leaf is color planned and you would just enjoy it and hook. Now, when you pick your background, whatever your background would be, light or dark, whichever is gonna pop your leaves, whatever leaves you would choose. This is where we go back to the silhouette class. Uh, what you would do there is if you're hooking in a number six, you would come in with a number four all around the leaf and set up a beveled edge. This will make the leaf look three-dimensional. So your first row around would be in a number four and you would go all and you would snug in. You would make your sharp points, you would snug in and make sure everything was nice and tight. Then you could hook in your six or your eight. If you're hooking in an eight, your beveled edge would be in a number six. It depends upon what you would like to do. I like to put my silhouette edge in in a number four. I think it makes a more beveled edge and allows you to raise it up. This is without sculpting it, but gives it a dimension from the base. So we're incorporating everything that we've learned in other Third Thursdays into the leaf. And don't just stick with fall colors. Sometimes everybody gets hung up on the fall colors, you know, and we don't go into other colors. A really beautiful uh, color plan sometimes is to introduce a little bit of a blue and a purple. And then you can introduce your gold. So think a little bit outside the box. Think about your tips. Uh, think about what you want your tips to be, that they, you want them to stand up from your background. These would really stand up nicely on a background. This could actually be the veins. This could be part of the leaf. There's a thousand and one different color combinations, as I'm sure you know. Now, suppose that this method here is not one that you want to do. You just want to pull and hook. So the pull and hook method is similar but there is a little bit more depth to it. So now we're gonna tip these a little differently. Uh, we're gonna come in here, and it's not because it's the pull and hook, it's just because I wanna show you how uh, these will turn different ways with the different ways that they are tipped. And so there we are. And you can tip that. Just don't do an outline and fill. Don't tip everything at one time. So here is the first one that we've done. And now here's the second one that we've tipped. And it does look a tad different. It is a tad different. And it won't be identical. And you can do each of the leaves if you're doing a runner in a different style. So with the maple leaf, with this type, and you just wanna do a pull and hook. Again, your veins go in first. So I'm gonna make this my veins. These are gonna be my veins for this one. This is gonna be my veins. I'm really gonna go a little wild here and I'm gonna tip it with this Prussian blue. So here's my nice veins. Here's my Prussian blue tips. Then I'm just gonna fill in and I'm gonna use my spot die here and I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it 
all this way. I'm not going to worry about what colors come where. And when I go to hook this, there's, notice I didn't segregate it into sections. This is where you're going to come from the center. That's why your, your vein has to be in. And I'm just going to come from the center and I'm going to start all around into here, just like that. And I'm going to outline in here, just like that. So this is my vein, this is my tip, <coughs> this is my leaf. So we're still going around and around, and that's how you're going to fill it. And with all the motion that's going into here, you will fill it in, and you'll fill it in nicely. Make sure, that's why the tips have to be in, make sure you get that color right in that corner. Again, I would do on the outside the same thing, a number four cut for a number six background and bevel it up. So this, as you can see, you go around and around and it does it a little bit more. Here's your vein. But as you can see, as you echo, this makes each section almost look like a mini oak leaf, where this is gonna be broken up into sections. Another way to hook it, and we're gonna use this piece, the leaves from here, is a little different. Here, the veins were not put in and there is not any tipping. So you can put in, like if you were doing your lettering, some scrap wool to hold your veins. And then you start with your darkest value and you come out in straight lines. And you can see these are straight lines. And you can add a few, you can add as many as you like. Then you come out with your lighter color and you fill around the straight lines. You pull up your scrap wool for your vein and put in the color that you want. So your darker is in the center, your lighter is out here. That's one option. In this case, it's the darker is on one side, and you can do that on one side or the other. And if you do dark on one side, a lighter on the other, you can still tip. And if you tip more on the darker side, it will lay over, your leaf will lay over. So this is dark on one side, lighter on the other. Just hints of the dark, but predominantly on one side. This is done in segments. The, as you can see, as opposed to this, the veins were put in first, and then there were just three solid colors. And with the three solid colors, they created puzzle pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. And the puzzle pieces are just right there and they fill in. Then these created other puzzle pieces. Now, if this had been tipped, it would be more defined. And then here are other puzzle pieces and they're filled in. So, this and this creates three different sections. Over here, and now this is the last section, over here, again, the veins were put in first. I know not a maple leaf, but a good lesson. So they just filled in. They just kept echoing it and filling in. They just took their other colors and they just followed the contour, but every time they did a row or two, they changed it out. Here, the, this way that we've done the leaf, it's done in sections and you can do the maple leaf the same way. One side, one color, one side, the other and tip one side. So you see all the different combinations that can be used and they can be used in this pattern. So there are just different ways to do it. I do wanna to touch for one minute if you're gonna add acorns to your maple leaf pattern. If you wanna add acorns, they're very easy to draw. You put a little hat and you loop around. Make sure your little hat is defined. I call this the little cap. We all love the, the little acorn caps and we needle felt the acorns. But make sure it's defined and it is art. So is this. And as you can see, there's a highlight in each acorn. This one is a darker one. 
with putting the highlights in your acorns and using greens, you can use browns. Acorns change their color by the region they're in. Uh, but make sure your direction of hooking, direction of hooking, that adds to the impact of the acorn. I know a lot of you have emailed in to me about it, and this was a good opportunity to go over that. If you notice, I put a dark brown line in here, dark brown line, and then went with lighter browns. A lot of times you miss outlining this. We get away from this in today's rug hooking, but you do need to separate it. You do need to make these into arcs as well, and that creates a successful acorn. And by you can have a plaid, you can have anything you would like for it, but you do need a highlight. You do need a highlight in each of the acorns or the acorn just does not look correct. It looks like bittersweet or a berry, but this is one time that you really, really need a highlight. So I wanted to touch on the acorns. And they're very easy to draw. You can add them into anything. They make a nice filler. You start with a straight line, you make your cap, you put your little tab on there, and then you come into here like that. And when I draw these, you can draw them different ways. I also make sure I do that so that I remember that this has to be the highlight in here. You can also draw it another way, straight line, up, up, more of a point, and then come down this way like that. Yes, it's very simplistic, but that's okay. You can cross hatch it if you would like. And then when you come in, see you're doing this and there's your highlight. It looks a little bit nicer and the cap should always extend out. It should always extend out. And once it extends out like that, you are able to make it look like an acorn. So there we go. And I think that just about concludes what we're going to go over for today. I hope that you use the pattern insert that yep. we're giving you. And I hope you use it and you show it and you post it and you send us emails of how the maple leaf is going to work and how you're going to make it work in your design. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is a great time to explore mixed media in a small because you will make it a table runner or a chair pad or a trivet. These also, as single leaves, make wonderful gifts. Um, you just square it off and have a great time with it. So I hope you enjoyed the maple leaf. I hope you enjoy our free pattern insert that we put into the September, October rug hooking magazine and you enjoy your fall. Yes, this is pre-recorded because we are on our way to Sauter Village rug hooking week. I hope to see many of you there and speak with you. Our September third Thursday with Lee San is gonna cover a topic that a lot of you have asked about and it is going to cover rocks. We are going to go over rocks. This happens to be the Nubble Lighthouse in York, Maine, but we are going to go over a lot of different ways to do rocks and how to pick wools for rocks and how to focus on the rocks and not be as scared of hooking rocks. So I look forward to seeing everybody that is coming to Rug Hooking Week at Souter. Stop by the booth, see the beautiful displays and the rugs and celebrations. Thank you, be well and stay well.